Welcome to today's update, where we cover two major space stories. In the first segment, we'll delve into the latest Starship developments, including Flight 9 updates and SpaceX's plans to send Tesla's humanoid robot Optimus to Mars. In the second half, we'll focus on the exciting news of the Starliner crew's return after their unexpected extended stay at the ISS. So, let's jump right in. Despite back-to-back -back setbacks in Starship Flights 7 and 8, SpaceX is moving swiftly toward the next test flight, Flight 9. The Starship assigned for this mission, Ship 35, has returned to the production site after completing its cryogenic proof testing and is now inside Mega Bay 2, where it is being prepared for engine installation. Before the Raptors are mounted, SpaceX must address critical issues in the engine feed lines and other associated systems to prevent a repeat of the failure seen in the last two flights. Key modifications include reinforcing the feed line structure, optimizing propellant flow management, adjusting the thrust profile, and improving venting in the vehicle's attic section, along with several other adjustments aimed at mitigating the propellant leakage issues observed in flights 7 and 8. One major unknown is whether SpaceX will also modify the regenerative cooling lines, which experienced leaks during flight 8, or if the design changes will be limited to just the main propellant feed lines. The upcoming static fire test of Ship 35 will be a crucial milestone, providing the first real data on whether these fixes are effective. Any anomalies detected during this test will need to be addressed before proceeding toward Flight 9. Meanwhile, Booster 16, likely Ship 35's partner for Flight 9, is hanging out at the Massey's test site. The booster successfully completed its cryogenic proof test before Flight 8, and based on the scheduled road closures, it could be transported back to the production site as early as Wednesday. Engine installation for static fire testing will commence after that. As for the flight schedule, no official target date has been announced. The only hint comes from Elon Musk's statement that SpaceX aims to be ready by the end of April. However, several factors could influence this timeline, including how quickly SpaceX identifies and resolves the issues that led to Flight 8's failure, as well as the time required to test and validate those fixes. Additionally, the ongoing FAA investigation must be completed before the agency grants clearance for Flight 9. Given SpaceX's track record of quickly diagnosing issues, implementing fixes, and pushing forward with testing, Flight 9 is expected to stay on track without major delays. Reports indicate that SpaceX has begun the production of next-gen Starship and booster vehicles. Let's examine the latest clues. In a significant development, SpaceX has initiated the assembly of its third-generation Starship Block 3 vehicles. This advancement was indicated by the recent sighting of a liquid oxygen header tank labeled V3 Loxcone within the Star Factory. Ship 39 is expected to be the first Block 3 prototype featuring significant structural and design improvements over previous iterations. The current Block 2 Starship can carry 100 tons, while the upcoming Block 3 is designed to carry twice as much. Notably, the Block 3 Starship is expected to be over 17 meters taller than its predecessor, expanding both the propellant tanks and payload bay volume to accommodate larger payloads. Additionally, Block 3 will incorporate three extra vacuum-optimized engines, increasing the total engine count to 9, and resulting in a thrust increase of nearly 69% compared to Block 2 vehicles. The Super Heavy Booster is also slated for substantial upgrades, while Block 2 boosters will see a height increase of 1.3 meters and a 15% boost in liftoff thrust. The third-generation boosters are planned to be 9.2 meters taller, with a 40% thrust increase over the current models. Ultimately, the complete Starship Block 3 stack will reach a towering height of 150 meters, marking a 23% increase over the existing configuration. SpaceX has initiated cryogenic proof testing of Block 2 booster components, notably the header tank, at its McGregor test facility to assess structural integrity. This test article resembles one observed at Starbase in December. The current booster generation utilizes shorter header tanks to store propellants necessary for landing burns. The design of the taller header tanks suggests that SpaceX might be exploring innovative uses for the increased propellant capacity. One potential approach could involve sourcing propellants for the boost back burn from the header tanks instead of the main tanks. Currently, during stage separation, propellant sloshing occurs within the booster's main tanks due to rapid changes in forces, vibrations, and the flip maneuver executed immediately afterward. Although SpaceX has added baffles to minimize the effects of sloshing inside the main tanks, this motion still disrupts the steady flow of propellants required to reignite the engines. This has caused engine relight issues during boost back burns multiple times during the Starship test flights. By using the header tanks, 
which stay full during the boost back burn, SpaceX can prevent sloshing and maintain a steady propellant supply, reducing the risk of engine restart failures. In November, a booster aft section was observed inside the Star Factory, featuring design changes that deviate from the Block 1 models. This observation suggests that SpaceX has begun assembling Block 2 boosters. Additionally, a cart labeled for use with the booster 18.1 forward ring flange was recently spotted inside the Star Factory. This indicates that booster 18.1 will serve as a booster test tank, incorporating design features similar to the Block 2 boosters. This approach allows SpaceX to test these features before implementing them on full-scale boosters, akin to the test tanks used previously for evaluating new design changes in Starships and boosters. Consequently, it is plausible that Booster 18 will be the full-scale Block 2 booster. In short, SpaceX is rapidly advancing its Starship program, actively assembling, testing, and preparing for flight tests with more advanced prototypes. As SpaceX fine-tunes Starship for near-term flights, its long-term vision is already unfolding. Elon Musk recently announced that Starship is slated to embark on a mission to Mars by the end of next year, carrying Tesla's humanoid robot, Optimus. Contingent upon the success of these initial landings, human missions to Mars could commence as early as 2029, though 2031 appears more probable. Optimus, also known as the Tesla bot, is a humanoid robot unveiled in 2022. Standing at approximately 173 centimeters tall and weighing around 57 kilograms, Optimus is designed to perform tasks that are repetitive, dangerous, or undesirable for humans. The robot is equipped with advanced artificial intelligence, enabling it to walk, climb stairs, lift and carry objects, and manipulate items autonomously. Its design incorporates lightweight materials, allowing for agility and efficiency in movement. Tesla built Optimus primarily for dangerous, repetitive, or boring tasks such as assisting in factories, but its versatility makes it a candidate for space exploration, particularly Mars missions. Deploying humanoid robots ahead of human crews enables critical environmental assessments, such as terrain analysis, hazard detection, and scouting for resources like water ice and mineral deposits. These resources are vital for in situ resource utilization, a key factor in developing a self-sustaining Martian colony. Outfitted with sensors, Optimus can simulate human physiological responses to prolonged Martian exposure, providing data that helps refine astronaut health strategies. By handling these preliminary assessments, the robot minimizes risk to human explorers while accelerating mission preparedness. Beyond data collection, Optimus would autonomously navigate the Martian terrain to construct habitats, set up life support systems, and establish infrastructure for human arrival. Its ability to assess real-time conditions and adapt to unforeseen challenges ensures mission continuity, reducing reliance on direct human intervention. Additionally, it can perform maintenance and other essential tasks, easing the logistical burden on future crewed missions. Serving as a testbed for AI-driven robotics in extreme extraterrestrial environments, Optimus advances autonomous system capabilities, paving the way for more sophisticated robotic assistance in future space missions. By undertaking dangerous and labor-intensive operations, it plays a crucial role in laying the foundation for human colonization efforts while enhancing long-term mission sustainability. As SpaceX advances its Mars ambitions, work at Starbase continues at an intense pace, with significant advancements in the construction of the second orbital launch pad. The rebar installation for the flame trench has been completed, featuring heavy steel cages strategically placed to reinforce the trench's base. On Sunday and Monday, nearly 350 concrete trucks arrived on site, pouring concrete over the rebar to create a strong foundation. This trench must not only effectively channel the exhaust from the booster's engines during liftoff, but also endure extreme thermal loads, intense acoustic vibrations, and immense stresses generated during launch. Meanwhile, work on the chopstick arms continues, with periodic testing to bring them into full operational status. Several rounds of actuation tests are yet to be conducted to validate their reliability in stacking and catching operations. Additionally, structural integrity tests using water bags are still pending, along with verification of critical components such as landing rails, stabilization and alignment pins, and linear actuators to ensure the arms are fully prepared for Starship stacking and catching operations. At the Sanchez site, construction on Pad B's orbital launch mount is ongoing, with workers currently focused on integrating the pre-installed water manifolds with the launch mount's top deck. This deluge system plays a vital role in launch pad protection by dispersing water during engine ignition to absorb heat and suppress acoustic shockwaves. 
Additionally, teams are nearing the final stages of installing the water spray channels for Pad B's flame deflector system. This system redirects and disperses exhaust gases while simultaneously absorbing heat and reducing acoustic energy, thereby minimizing structural stress on surrounding infrastructure. The water storage tanks for the deluge and flame deflector systems are already in place. Concurrently, workers are laying down pipelines and electrical conduits necessary for propellant transfer and power distribution to Pad B. However, the pad remains far from operational, as multiple critical systems still require installation and rigorous testing before it can support launch activities. Let's take a look at the recent activities at the Starbase production site. The final aft section of Starship 36 was moved into Mega Bay 2 several days ago, suggesting that the vehicle may now be fully stacked. This Starship, set to fly on the 10th integrated flight test, will be ready for cryogenic proof testing once the installation of hydraulic lines and avionic systems is completed. Meanwhile, SpaceX has begun stacking Starship 37 for Flight 11, as indicated by the nose cone and payload bay section being moved into Mega Bay 2 last Saturday afternoon. However, unlike previous Starships at this stage, Ship 37 is missing several heat shield tiles and forward flaps, raising questions about whether SpaceX has changed its stacking procedures. With all the latest Starship updates covered, let's now turn our attention to another major spaceflight story, the long-awaited return of the Starliner crew from the ISS. After an extraordinary nine-month mission aboard the International Space Station, NASA astronauts Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore have safely returned to Earth, concluding a widely followed chapter in space exploration. Let's break down the entire Starliner saga, the Crew-10 mission that paved the way for their return, and all the drama that unfolded over the past nine months. The SpaceX Crew-10 mission, launched on March 14th aboard a Falcon 9 rocket from Kennedy Space Center in Florida, played a pivotal role in facilitating the Crew-9 return. Riding inside the Crew Dragon Endurance spacecraft, four astronauts traveled to the International Space Station. NASA astronaut Anne McLean, a U.S. Army colonel, engineer, and experienced astronaut, served as mission commander. This was her second mission to the ISS, following the Soyuz MS-11 mission in 2018, during which she spent over 200 days in space. Accompanying her as mission pilot was NASA astronaut Nicole Ayers, a U.S. Air Force major, making her first journey into space. Representing the Japan Space Agency, JAXA, Takuya Onishi was on his second space station mission, having previously served as a flight engineer for over 100 days during the Soyuz MS-1 mission in 2016. Russian cosmonaut Kirill Peskov joined Crew-10 as a flight engineer, marking his debut spaceflight. Following liftoff, the Dragon capsule separated from the Falcon 9's upper stage approximately 10 minutes later and began its journey to the ISS. The crew spent approximately 28 hours in transit, performing various system checks and orbital maneuvers before reaching the station on March 16. The spacecraft executed a precision docking with the forward-facing port of the Harmony module, and about an hour later, the hatches were opened, allowing the astronauts to enter the station. They were welcomed by the existing seven-member crew of Russian and U.S. astronauts, marking the beginning of their six-month stay aboard the station. The arrival of Crew-10 cleared the way for the return of Crew-9 astronauts, including Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore, who originally arrived at the ISS in June 2024 aboard Boeing Starliner as part of its first crew test flight. Engineers identified multiple helium leaks in Starliner's propulsion system and failures in five of its eight aft-facing reaction control thrusters while the spacecraft was actively executing its docking procedures with the ISS. Despite these issues, the spacecraft successfully docked, allowing the crew to board the station. However, the thruster failures raised serious concerns about Starliner's ability to return safely, as these thrusters are essential for key maneuvers, including undocking from the ISS, orienting the vehicle for re-entry, and ensuring a controlled landing on Earth. During the days following the docking, NASA and Boeing mission teams managed to restore four of the thrusters through a series of software resets and hot fire tests. Helium leak assessments also showed that the leak rates had decreased, but the underlying cause of the issues remained uncertain. Given the unresolved thruster issues and persistent helium leaks, NASA deemed it too risky for Wilmore and Williams to return on Starliner. Instead, the astronauts were reassigned to return on a SpaceX Crew Dragon. On September 6, Starliner undocked from the ISS, executed a successful deorbit burn, and re-entered Earth's atmosphere without crew aboard. The capsule safely landed at White Sands Space Harbor in New Mexico, marking the end of its troubled mission. Meanwhile, Williams and Wilmore's stay, initially planned for just eight days, was extended to over nine months through scheduled crew rotations. 
To accommodate the unexpected change, NASA adjusted the Crew-9 mission plan. Instead of the usual four-person crew, the mission launched in September with only two astronauts, NASA's Nick Haig and Russian cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov, leaving two open seats for Williams and Wilmore's eventual return. Despite the extended stay, their time on the ISS was not wasted. The two astronauts, alongside Haig and Gorbanov, contributed to a wide range of scientific research and maintenance tasks, ensuring the continued operation of the station. In January, Williams and Wilmore even conducted a spacewalk to perform crucial maintenance and collect material samples from the Destiny Laboratory and Quest airlock for scientific analysis. Finally, on March 17, Williams, Wilmore, Haig, and Gorbanov boarded Crew Dragon Freedom for their journey home. After sealing the hatches, the spacecraft undocked from the ISS and began its descent toward Earth. As planned, the capsule re-entered the atmosphere, deployed its parachutes, and made a textbook splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico on March 18. Recovery teams, including fast boats, quickly approached to assess the capsule's integrity to ensure safety before the main recovery vessel lifted it onto its deck. Once aboard, the hatch was opened, and the crew was carefully extracted one by one, with recovery personnel assisting by physically supporting and lifting them onto stretchers as needed due to their prolonged microgravity exposure. Medical professionals then performed initial health assessments on the vessel's deck, checking vital signs and mobility, before the crew was transported to a nearby medical facility for comprehensive post-flight evaluations to confirm their well-being after months in space. These assessments are crucial, as extended exposure to microgravity can lead to physiological changes such as muscle atrophy, bone density reduction, and fluid redistribution. However, it's important to note that while these changes occur, astronauts undergo rigorous pre-flight training and in-flight exercise regimens to mitigate such effects. Moreover, previous missions have seen astronauts safely return after year-long stays aboard the ISS, indicating that, despite these physiological changes, crew members can readjust effectively to Earth's gravity with proper rehabilitation protocols. In the following days and weeks, the crew will begin a structured rehabilitation program, including physical therapy and targeted exercise regimens designed to rebuild strength, restore balance, and enhance cardiovascular function. Simultaneously, they will participate in mission debriefings with NASA and SpaceX teams, providing valuable insights to refine future long-duration space missions. Crew 9 marked the conclusion of one of the most complex crew rotations in recent ISS history, showcasing the adaptability and resilience of both astronauts and space agencies in overcoming unexpected technical challenges. Meanwhile, on board the ISS, the Crew-10 mission, with its experienced and diverse crew, continues to advance human spaceflight, building on the legacy of Crew-9's return and the resolution of the Starliner challenges. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, so you never miss an episode.